Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and if you upgraded to macOS Tahoe and are having nothing but problems, slowdowns, or other issues, and you want to be able to downgrade to macOS Sequoia or lower, this video is for you. I'm going to give you a full walkthrough on an Apple Silicon device and an Intel device. Let's jump in and get started. First of all, I want to be clear, Apple does not make it easy to downgrade from a newer OS to a previous OS. I'm going to show you how to do it the Apple-supported way, so we're following exactly Apple's instructions. And there's some new pieces here that Apple has put on their instructions that we need to be clear clear about. First of all, we're going to need a USB flash drive or an external hard drive to be able to create a USB installer of macOS Sonoma or macOS Sequoia or whatever OS you want to be able to downgrade. Now I'm recommending two discs, one for our time machine because we got to back up all of our data and one for our install that we can keep separately off to the side in case we need them again. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that the OS version that we're going to reinstall to downgrade to is compatible with your Mac. And this is important because the last thing you want to do is to create a Sequoia installer and try to downgrade your M5 Mac, and guess what? You can't even downgrade to it because the lowest OS this shipped with is Mac OS 26 Tahoe. That's why it's important to check this before you begin. So what you need to do is to go to Apple about this Mac, and what you'll see here is your screen that shows you exactly the version that you have. MacBook Pro 13 inch M1 2020. So then we go over to everymac.com, click on MacBook Pro, and we can see here is our M1 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, and we can scroll down here to see pre-installed OS. We can install all the way back to macOS Big Sur. So that part is complete and we're ready to go to the next step. This wasn't here before. This is new and Apple has placed this under Intel based Mac and Mac with Apple Silicon. So our M1 and our Intel. What we need to do is go into our system settings and then click on our Apple ID here and click on the sign out button. And that should deactivate Find My Mac and our iCloud so we're all logged out. The next step is critically important. You need to back up your Mac. There's no official way that Apple gives to be able to downgrade without erasing the entire hard drive and all your data, your user account, all your files and everything will be gone. Now you might be able to restore those if you're using iCloud and file sync, but I don't trust that. That's why I want to have it here and secure. And I recommend two pieces of backup. If you only want to use one, that's up to you. And if it doesn't work, that's on you. But we're going to back up a time machine. So all we need to do is select a drive to be able to copy our data to start the time machine. Okay, the next step is we're going to back up our our M1 MacBook Pro with a USB drive and time machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into the Mac here. Once it's plugged in, you'll see it right here. And all we need to do is go into Disk Utility to erase the drive. If you've got files on this drive or anything, now's the time to copy them off because this entire drive will be erased for our time machine backups. When you open up Disk Utility, you'll see your internal hard drive up here and our external hard drive is right here. What we want to do is make sure we click on View show all devices, and then we're going to click on the top level drive for our USB drive right here. And we'll see that it is a 250 gigabyte and we're going to click on erase. So we're going to make sure that we click on our scheme and we click GUID partition map. And we're going to click on APFS because the last few versions of Mac OS require APFS for our time machine backup. Don't worry about the name, click on erase. Click on done and we can close on disk utility. Okay, now that we have our backup drive erased and on the desktop, all we need to do now is to go into system settings and then go into general and then scroll down for time machine and then add backup disk. And it should automatically detect that you have a drive plugged in. We're gonna set up on that disk. It does say that you should have a drive, a backup drive that's bigger than the disk on here. We're only doing one backup and we don't have that much data other than a couple screenshots. So we're gonna be okay with no problem. I also 100% recommend encrypting this backup with a password because anybody that can find this drive can plug it into their machine and get to all your data, your personal files and everything. So make sure we encrypt this disk. One, two, three, four, and password to ensure one. It's gonna prepare, done. Now all we need to do, it's already gonna start, but we're gonna tell it to back up right now. And there goes the backup. You see, it's gonna calculate how much it's gonna need. Now, one quick thing while we're waiting for this to finish, hopefully you made a backup from Sequoia or Sonoma or lower, because some things don't work. Like for example, photos or different databases don't work. And the problem is when we go back a version, even Time Machine doesn't allow you to restore. So we're gonna have to go in and I'll show you that. We're gonna have to go in and get the files manually anyway, and I'll walk you through that when we get there. And there we go, we're almost done here and we got two minutes remaining. The backup is fully complete and if we want, we can go into here and we can double check it, everything's okay. You can double click on the date and you can see here's our data. Everything's here, users, test, desktop, there's all of our screenshots. Okay, now that our backup is complete, we need to create 
the Mac OS Sequoia or Sonoma or whatever it was you want to be able to downgrade to is external install drive. What we're going to do is we're going to unplug our time machine here and we're going to plug in a blank disk for our install. Again, you can use any kind of USB you want. We're going to plug this in and there's our entitled drive. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to erase. Now we're doing an extra step here because the create install media will automatically format the drive, but this is just in case you get any errors or it's not working correctly. This happens a lot for open core legacy patcher users when they're creating an installer. So this saves you some time later. Make sure we go back in there and click on the top level external drive and let's click on erase and make sure that we select GUID partition map the format is mac was extended not apfs extended journaled for our mac OS installer don't worry about the name click on erase done okay to download the full installer there's many ways to do it and what i keep here is a directory listing of all apple's official urls directly from apple's own servers to download the full installer all i need to do is scroll down and you can see a full list of all of apple's public installers that they have on the server now if you want you can go to the app store and do the same thing that's totally fine so what we want to do is we want to be able to go to the latest version so we're going to click on install assistant and it'll automatically download to our downloads folder right here now that we have the full installer downloaded, whether you download it from the App Store and it's inside your applications folder, you'll see install Mac OS Sequoia or whatever OS you want in here. But we downloaded from my website with the install assistant. So we'll click on downloads or go to downloads here. And we're gonna have to install the install assistant package. What that is, is a package that contains the full installer. We'll click on continue and install, enter in our password, our super secret password and it'll be right in the installer folder. We're gonna keep this and there's our install Mac OS Sequoia. What we need to do is open up terminal, which is located in applications utilities folder. Or you can do command space to open it up. Now, easy way to do this is to go into the window. We're gonna type in sudo for running it as an administrator and then space. And we're gonna drag the full command over here. The way to do that is to control or right click on the installer, show package contents. We're gonna navigate through contents resources and then create install media executable is right here all we need to do is drag that to the window like this and then we got the full path here make sure we got a space there we're going to do dash dash volume and space and then we're going to drag our usb drive right into the window and that is our full command hit enter type in our password for our administrator and then it's asking us one last time if we're sure we want to erase the disk. Well, we already did that to save some time. Click on Y and let's get started. It's going to erase that disk, reformat it. That's why we didn't have to worry about the name. If you do get this, click on allow, no problem. And we are going to copy the essential files from the installer on the hard drive to our USB drive. Okay, we're at 100% and give it a second more. There it is. Install media now available at volumes, install Mac OS Sequoia. Okay, now it's time to boot our Macs into recovery, but there's two different ways to do it with Apple Silicon and Intel. We're gonna walk through both of them at the same time. First, let's shut the machines down. So let's go to Apple logo and then click on shut down. Once the systems are done, give it about 10 seconds to stay off and then we can move to the next step. Now that they're both off, we can boot our Apple Silicon to our recovery screen. The way to do that is to hold down the power button. Whether you have a Mac mini, you have an iMac, or you have a Mac Pro, it's all the same. Hold down the power button and follow the on-screen instructions. So first of all, click and hold it. You'll hear it turn on, and then you'll see it going on the screen. Continue holding for startup options. Once you see it change to loading startup options, lift off the power button and then you'll see your recovery screen show up just like this. Since we have our USB drive, we'll see our Mac OS Sequoia installer show up. Now for our Intel, all we need to do is click on power also, click on our power button, but hold on the option key, the option. Keep holding, keep holding until we see our selection screen for our boot options. Now we see our boot options and we see Mac OS Sequoia. Now, really quick, if you have an Intel device, if you haven't enabled us booting you have to go into recovery first to be able to open up the startup security utility before we erase the drive because you can't do this if the drive's erased you have to turn on allow booting for external media so click on command r to boot in recovery go up to the top menu bar select startup security enter in your password click allow and then reboot hold down option 
and then you'll be able to select install macOS Sequoia. So now we're at the same screen here, we can select them both to boot, be able to boot to our installer. Click on install macOS Sequoia on our Apple Silicon and click on install macOS Sequoia on our Intel Mac. Give it a second to boot up. We're already in recovery on our Apple Silicon device. Notice how we did not get prompted and we're rebooting here uh, to be able to boot to the uh, USB drive. We were not prompted to enter in our password because we turned off for our Find My Mac and we are not encrypted. If you were encrypted with File Vault 2, you would have a password that you would have to enter in right here or you need to type in our email so we're ready to go here we're going to hold off and wait for us to boot in for our intel device okay now that we're in recovery we have to be able to erase the drive when we are in our apple silicon device we're brought to this screen we don't even click continue we need to click on quit the installer click on quit now we're going to be back to the main menu we can't just click install Mac OS Sequoia over the top of Tahoe because we'll get an error saying we can't downgrade. So you have to erase the disk. So from here, we're going to click on disk utility and then continue. And then we're going to be able to see the full system. So we want to click on Macintosh hard drive up here and then click on erase. What this is telling you is it's a volume group and the entire volume group, including the OS on Macintosh hard drive, and Macintosh, all your data will be erased. Final warning, make sure you had all your data backed up. Click on erase erase Mac. And this is one final warning. Click erase Mac and restart. There it goes. I'll give it a second to finish and it'll boot right back into recovery. There we are. We're booting up. Now we're back into recovery and Apple Silicon Mac. We have to be able to activate the Mac. So we're going to need a network connection. You can plug in your network adapter with an ethernet cable, or you can go up here and connect to your Wi-Fi. You should see the Wi-Fi icon up here. Click on that and connect to your internal Wi-Fi network. Okay, I just connected to the network and it's connecting. You can see the little icon up there. Once it's connected, you'll see it go to the next step as soon as it, and there we go. It's registering with Apple, getting its certificate and making sure it's not activation locked and it'll go to the next screen. I'll say this Mac is now activated. Done. Then your Mac is now activated. Exit to recovery. The next step is, is to reinstall Mac OS Sequoia, but it also depends on how we reboot it back into recovery. Did it boot off the internal recovery that's still there or did it boot off of the external drive? We're going to find out because we can tell by the timing. Click on continue and continue. And as soon as we see this, we know that we're booted into the internal recovery and it's talking to the network because it would immediately go into here. So if you see this, you can go through and let this do this, but it's gonna take three hours instead of 30 minutes. So we're gonna reboot and I'll show you that. All we're gonna do is shut down the machine and then reboot back into recovery. So we're gonna click on Apple and shut down. Okay, now we held on the power button and we see our selection menu and notice that we don't see Macintosh hard drive anymore, but just recovery. Now we're gonna click on install Mac OS Sequoia. We're gonna be able to install right off the USB. It's gonna be five times quicker and you'll be able to see that now. Click on next, give it a second here, continue. And notice how it's not checking with the network anymore. Now we're talking directly with the USB drive. We'll be able to get to the next screen here, click on agree and click on Macintosh hard drive and then click on continue. And now it'll start. Notice the about time remaining here. If it says three hours, that means that you're installing it from the internet. And again, that's not the end of the world, but we didn't make this to be able to waste time. So it's gonna go a lot faster from this USB drive and install in no time flat. So now that that's installing for our Apple Silicon, let's switch back to our Intel device. It's pretty close to being the same. Okay, we're back to our Intel and you can skip forward to the next step if you're on Apple Silicon, but if you're on Intel, we're gonna follow the same procedure. Click on Disk Utility and then click on Continue. And then we're gonna click on the top level drive and then click on Erase. Click on Erase and there we go. Done. Now we can quit out of Disk Utility and then we can click on Install Mac OS Sequoia and then click on Continue. And notice how it's not checking like we saw before on the Apple Silicon. If you see checking installation here, that means it's connecting to Apple and we need to reboot and boot off the USB. But on Intel, we don't even have to worry about that because it doesn't have to reboot. Click on Agree, Agree, and Macintosh hard drive, continue, and there goes the install. 36 minutes. So now we have both our Apple Silicon and our Intel device 
reinstalling macOS Sequoia. As soon as they're done and come back up, we'll show you how to walk through the setup assistant and restore our data from Time Machine. All right, all we need to do is click on continue on our country. And as we mentioned earlier, since the Mac OS Tahoe is a newer Time Machine backup, it will not work on Sequoia or Sonoma or older. So we're not gonna select the Time Machine here. We're gonna do it manually later. We'll click on setup as new and click on continue. Not now. We'll select our network. Okay, our network is connected. And we'll click on continue here. We'll create our account. We're gonna create the account the same name as you had had before. So for example, my account name previously was test. We're gonna create the same account name here and then click continue. This is here if you log in as iCloud and you're gonna be able to unlock the account with your iCloud. But since we're not doing that just yet, we're gonna click unclick on there and click on continue. And you can sign on to iCloud once you get back into the operating system. All right, welcome to Mac and Mac with Sequoia. We are back. All right, we're back on the desktop. It's time to restore our files from our Time Machine backup. But remember, we set the password to encrypt the backup. So if someone steals this disk, they can't get the files off them unless they know the password. But we all know the same password. So we're gonna type that in right now and it'll unlock the disk and it'll show that it is a Time Machine backup. Now what we can do is since we know that the Tahoe Time Machine is not compatible with older versions of Mac OS, we're gonna manually copy the files over to the user folder. We can click on Finder or Macintosh hard drive to get into our Documents folder. And I like to turn on the view and then show our path bar and our status bar at the bottom so we can see where we're at. We're gonna to go to Macintosh hard drive or users and there's our main folder. Now remember that's why it's important to create the same username as we did as our old backup. So we'll open up our time machine here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna go into it just like a regular backup. If we go into here, we can see all of the backup files, the applications that are different than the stock applications on Mac OS, our library preference files. We don't really need anything in our software update, but our system files and our user folder. So if we go into the user folder, this is the folder with all our data. If we go into the desktop, we can see there's all of our screenshots. And if we go into the desktop or the downloads folder, we'll be able to see, look, there's our install assistant and a Safari icon. So now all we need to do is go into the test folder on each of these backups. And then we're gonna copy all these files and we're gonna drag them right over here to our user folder that is empty. And we are gonna replace each one with our backup. Replace, 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 downloads, movies, music, pictures, public. And we're gonna type in our administrator password for this account and it's copying everything over. There's our backup screenshots from our previous backup. And look, you can even see they're from Mac OS Tahoe. See that? And what it's doing now is it's copying that install assistant. Now, what I recommend is, is not really bringing over all those other preferences from Tahoe just yet, like we showed you earlier. So if we go back into the backup here, we can see that all these library preferences, for example, anything you set up with your mouse settings or kind of any menu settings, it's all here. But I would recommend just running your system just like this for now and seeing how it's good. And look, you can see all the modification dates today at 2.54 p.m. and it is 9.43 p.m. So everything here is all here from before. Here's our downloads folder. It's all here, all of our files. Again, I wouldn't really bring over any library preferences files. I would set this thing up like new because man, is this thing gonna run good. And you're gonna be happy that you're on good old trusty Mac OS Sequoia again. So that's it. We are back to Mac OS Sequoia. I hope your downgrade went well. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.